So now on to our dinosaur of the day, Pachycephalosaurus, which was a request from Cole via Patreon. And the name means thick-headed lizard. The type species is Pachycephalosaurus wyomingensis. Yeah, I'm surprised we hadn't done this one yet, now that we're in episode 93. There's a lot of dinosaurs to cover. (laughs) There are. I would say this is one of the 10 most popular ones, though. Yeah, we haven't covered all the most popular ones yet, either. Hmm. Working on it. (laughs) It lived in the late Cretaceous in North America, in Montana, South Dakota, and Wyoming. It's known originally from a skull with a thick roof, and more complete fossils found after, after it was first described. Tylosteus, a dinosaur from Western North America, is considered synonymous with Pachycephalosaurus. The first Pachycephalosaurus fossils may have been found in the early 1850s. So Ferdinand van de Veer Hayden found a bone fragment in either 1859 or 1860 in the Lance Formation in Montana, and Joseph Lady described it in 1872, but thought it was part of an armadillo-like animal or part of the dermal armor of a reptile, and he called this Tylosteus. And then more than 100 years later, Donald Baird re-examined the bone and found it was part of the bone on the back of the skull of Pachycephalosaurus. So usually the name Tylosteus would remain because it was named before Pachycephalosaurus, but Baird petitioned to use Pachycephalosaurus instead of Tylosteus in 1985 because the name Tylosteus hadn't been used in more than 50 years and was based on undiagnostic materials. And I think we've talked about in other episodes these kind of cases where the more popular name ends up prevailing. Yeah, sometimes. Gets contentious, apparently. Yeah. (laughs) But if you don't use a a name for like 50 years, it's got a good chance of kind of disappearing. Mm -hmm. So Charles Gilmore named Pachycephalosaurus wyomingensis in 1931 based on a partial skull found in the Lance Formation in Wyoming. And Gilmore assigned it Trudon wyomingensis, but Charles Sternberg corrected this in 1945. It had teeth similar to Trudon, which is why it was classified as Trudon. Barnum Brown and Eric Marin Schleicher found more complete material and changed the name to Pachycephalosaurus in 1943, and they named two species, Grangeri, based on a skull from the Hell Creek Formation in Montana, and Reinheimeri based on a dome from the Lance Formation in South Dakota. As of 1983, these species are considered synonyms of Pachycephalosaurus wyomingensis, though. Then Trudon's tooth was found to match Steinonychosaurus, which is a theropod very different to Pachycephalosaurids. So a new group was established called Pachycephalosauridae in 1974, so they wouldn't be grouped in Trudontidae. And Pachycephalosaurus was the next genus with seniority, which is why it was named Pachycephalosauridae. Two Pachycephalosauria most closely related to Pachycephalosaurus are Draco Rex and Stygimoloch, which, depending on who you ask, may be junior forms of Pachycephalosaurus. And st- if you're feeling lumpy. <laughs> yes. So Stygimoloch was named in 1983 and Draco Rex was named in 2006. And it's Draco Rex Hogwartsia in honor of Harry Potter. Mm. <laughs> in 2007, Jack Horner presented at the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology that Draco Rex and Stygimoloch may have been juvenile Pachycephalosaurus instead of being their own genera because the dome and the horns were not well developed. So Jack Horner and M.B. Goodwin published their findings in 2009, and they said that Pachycephalosaurus lost its spikes and grew domes as it matured. And more evidence of this came from baby Pachycephalosaurus skulls described in 2016 by David Evans and Mark Goodwin based on two bone beds in the Hell Creek Formation. These babies had knobs on their skulls, which shows that they started off with knobs and then developed domes. So Nick Longrich and colleagues published a study in 2010 that supported the idea that flat-skulled pachycephalosaurs were juveniles. And the original paper by Jack Horner and Mark Goodwin, published in 2009, was called Extreme Cranial Ontogeny in the Upper Cretaceous Dinosaur Pachycephalosaurus in PLOS One, if you want to look it up. In 2006, Robert Sullivan said that the Tylosteus bone may be more like Draco Rex than Pachycephalosaurus, though again, depending on who you ask, Draco Rex may be a juvenile Pachycephalosaurus. They lived in the same area and time as T. rex, and Pachycephalosaurus was either herbivorous or omnivorous. It's unclear what they ate because they had small teeth that could not chew tough vegetation, so maybe they ate leaves, seeds, fruit, insects. 
but their teeth were sharp and serrated, which would have been good for shredding. They had a pointed beak as well. Pachycephalosaurus was about 15 feet or 4.5 meters long and weighed 990 pounds or 450 kilograms and was bipedal with long hind limbs and small forelimbs. They had large eye sockets that faced forward so they had good vision and probably binocular vision and they probably had a short thick neck and a heavy rigid tail and the neck was S or U-curved. They're known as bone-headed or dome-headed dinosaurs, and they, it's because they had this large bony dome on the top of their skull that was 10 inches or 25 centimeters thick. The back of the dome had bony knobs and the snout had short, bony, blunt spikes that projected upwards. Scientists at one point thought that pachycephalosaurus heads were kneecaps. This is in the late hmm. 1800s when not many dinosaur bones had been found. That's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> The thick skull domes made scientists think that they fought each other by butting heads, but this is very much disputed now. Yeah, that one goes back and forth pretty much constantly. Yeah. Where someone will say the neck wasn't strong enough or the head couldn't have withstood the impact, and then they'll find some new evidence or do a new study or model, and then it will look like it could have happened. So I don't even know where we're at now on that one. (laughs) Well, so... They used to think that they were like bighorn sheep or musk oxen, except they're bipedal, and that the males rammed their heads into each other. But then, as Garrett said, there's a debate now, so it's thought that the skull roof couldn't have sustained the impact of ramming, and it wasn't until recently that scientists found evidence of scars or damage on the skulls. And having an S or U-shaped neck meant that they couldn't directly headbutt. So maybe they fought by flank butting, which is based on the fact that they were pretty wide. Yeah, so they would have, like, run up next to each other and then kind of tried to knock the other one over or something like that by ramming their head into the side of the other's body. Exactly. But then in 2004, Goodwin and Horner did a study that showed that the bone structure of the dome is spongy inside, so they may have crumbled from too many blows to the head. CT scans of pachycephalosaurs, stegosaurus, and... Prinicephal prines found that they could withstand head-to-head impacts, though. Joseph Peterson did CT scans, also of a pachycephalosaurus skull in 2012, and a study in 2012 showed cranial pathologies that probably happened from fighting. In 2013, Peterson and others found that 22% of all domes in their study had cranial pathologies from osteomyelitis, an infection from trauma that leads to infection of bone tissue. So flat-headed pachycephalosaurids did not have pathologies, and this supports the idea that they fought intraspecies, adult males at least. Also, pachycephalosaurid domes are made of fibrolamellar bone, which has fibroblasts that help heal wounds, and this strongly supports the idea that they did butt heads. The dome may have also been used to attract mates, though. The ladies love a big bald head. I guess so. <laughs> You can see Pachycephalosaurus in Jurassic Park movies. And in The Lost World, it was portrayed as smaller, though, more like Stegosaurus size. And Pachycephalosaurus is also one of the four dinosaurs you can play as in the game Saurian. Pachy is also an arc survival evolved. The wild ones in the game are usually passive, but they can also charge and headbutt. And then domesticated ones are good for battle because of headbutting, and they're fast. Yeah, you can use them to knock out other animals. I didn't really like using them that much when I was playing Ark. And then also, in the fourth generation Pokemon games, there's a Pokemon called Cranidos, which is definitely based on Pachycephalosaurus. It looks pretty similar. (laughs) That's funny. So Pachycephalosaurus is part of the clad Pachycephalosauria, which are herbivorous ornithischians that lived in the late Cretaceous in North America and Asia. And although Pachycephalosauria are bipedal, they are more closely related to ceratopsians than ornithopods. And Pachycephalosaurus is the largest known Pachycephalosaurid. 